Today, we're here to talk about artificial intelligence with three different generations. We will speak about ethics, applications of artificial intelligence, and also its future. And I am here in this special place, the Geological Museum of Warsaw, surrounded by beautiful artifacts that tell us so much about history and evolution of life. And who knows, maybe AI will become a part of it in the future. What is AI? Okay, AI means artificial intelligence. But in order to answer your question, Jonas, I guess I have to ask you first, we can also ask Anastasia, what does it mean to be intelligent? What do you think? Like to be um, like smart and like do the right things. Yeah, very good. Well, actually it means to be smart and to be smart means to be able to learn, to be learned from the experiences, to be learned from some things that have happened and to, well, behave in a different way later on because you've learned how to behave. And for artificial intelligence, it's pretty much the same. You can build a computer program that's going to learn and over time behave differently. So you can say at the beginning, it's just going to, let's say, recognize some objects like cats on the picture very poorly. But over time, because it learns, it's going to start to recognize those cats really, really well. And that means that it's not just a typical computer program, but it's an AI. Is AI evil? Are robots evil? Like Terminator? Mm, it's a great question. Mm, AI is neither evil nor good by itself. You can make it good, but it can be programmed to behave in an evil way that all depends on you. So if you want to build a robot that's going to behave really well and help you and support you in various things and help and support other people, then you're gonna build one. But if you have some sort of, I don't know, malicious goals and you want to build an AI system that's not going to help people but actually harm them, you are able to do that too. It's all actually a matter of our decision. We are determining the way AI will be. Why people build robots? People build robots for various reasons. They build robots because they want to gain some help from them. If something's very heavy for them, a robot can carry that for them. But they also build robots because in some situations they cannot do some things that a robot could do. Imagine a situation when there is a coronavirus pandemic somewhere happening. And for human to access that area, it would be really dangerous. It would not be safe because that person could get sick. But for a robot to drive there and bring medicines to all the people who are there and are infected is actually a very good idea. So we build interventional robots so that they can help us in places where people cannot access. Mm, have you ever seen a robot? I don't remember, but I don't think so. Jonas, have you seen a robot in your life? Mm. No. No. How about a smartphone? Have you ever used a smartphone? Oh. No. Well, you are using a smartphone here and now, so I guess, in fact, you are using a little robot. It's a piece of artificial intelligence. You know where that is exactly? Yeah. It's like when you hold your phone and you're Set your camera on your face, the system will recognize you. It will say it's Jonas. And actually, that's artificial intelligence. Yes. It is. And how about Alexa? Have you ever spoken to Alexa? Siri? Siri or Siri? Uh, I have Siri because I'm not using. But you're not using it. OK. I have spoken to both. OK. How was that for you? Felt they smart? Did you feel like you're talking to somebody who is almost like a human or not so yeah, much? Yeah, almost like a human because like they sound like a human and they seem like a human. Mm -hmm. uh, but like they know a lot, but sometimes uh, when you just like talk to Siri, then uh, she doesn't understand everything. 
That's true. Yes, yes, yes. Well, artificial intelligence does not really understand everything that we say. And very often, it doesn't manage time well. What does that mean? It means that it will not understand that when you're talking about something that you're referring, for instance, to yesterday. For artificial intelligence, yesterday means nothing. For us, it means like a real day that has happened before today. So for AI, this is very, very hard. What is AI? AI, or artificial intelligence, is actually a set of algorithms. They are specific algorithms because they are algorithms that learn from data. And they can learn in a supervised way where you intervene, in an unsupervised way where you don't intervene or not so much, and through reinforcement, which means that they learn from their own experiences and mistakes that they've made. That's interesting. And so what are the main applications of artificial intelligence and in which sectors does it develop? I think currently there are no areas that artificial intelligence could not transform. From uh, agriculture to retail, from logistics and transportation to the medical sector and healthcare, actually AI is and can be everywhere. And also when you think about enterprise functions, you can say that AI can be very helpful in security, very helpful in marketing, in sales, in uh, recruitment. Actually, whenever you think about any kind of enterprise function, AI can be placed there and optimize the process. What are your ideas about the future? What would you like to do professionally? Um, I would like to go into marketing. Okay, yes. all right. For a marketing student and future marketing professional, artificial intelligence can be very good and useful because it can help you in targeting your consumers and understanding their needs better. There are specific algorithms for that. They're called clustering. Mm -hmm. So AI is very helpful to students as well. Well, for students, I think artificial intelligence can become a very important tool of recommending courses for them. So in the future, you will think about education as puzzles and pieces of puzzle that you connect together. And AI can help you to find a course that is well aligned with your future career path. When we think about uh, global change, climate change, this is a very big topic now. and. How can AI help in this sector? So in terms of uh, sustainable development and uh, climate crisis, AI can be very useful and I don't think it really reaches its potential yet, but we're getting there. So AI can be very helpful in understanding, because it has this predictive component, how climate will change in a given area very specifically in a very granular way so that you can make data-driven decisions about what to do there and what kind of actions to take. So it will be a very important part of information about what to do, you know, in the next steps. That's very insightful. Thank you. All right. <laughs> What is AI? AI, or in other words, artificial intelligence, is um, a scientific discipline. And it covers robotics, expert systems, but also machine vision. So those algorithms that allow us to detect objects or can generate objects and images by themselves. Um, AI is also natural language processing, so uh, various text-to-speech solutions like virtual assistants, or machine translation, where you can algorithmically translate from French to Polish or to English or to German. AI is also expert systems and it's also optimization systems of different kinds. And obviously it's also uh, machine learning, so a set of algorithms that allow other algorithms to uh, learn what's needed. And that would pretty much be it. Can I trust AI? Um, you can trust AI, uh, and you should be able to trust AI, but only when it's built according to certain principles. Uh, so we do have certain ethical concerns regarding artificial intelligence. Like, for instance, the fact that it can be biased biased against someone and discriminate someone or that it's intransparent so you're not allowed to really see and you're not able to see how the information is processed inside the AI system or that it's going to use certain private data of yours and it's not controllable. So we have to address all the issues and uh, build AI that is trustworthy, meaning that it's controllable, that it's fair and non-biased and that it's transparent and then you'll be able to trust it. 
I hope our children will uh, trust AI. I do hope so as well. If we build it according to these principles, I'm sure that they will be able to trust it. Aren't we leaving humans behind? It is a misconception that artificial intelligence is uh, a tool uh, to replace humans. In fact, AI is not there to replace humans, but rather to support them and help them in various activities, both physical and cognitive. It's there to be a complementary mind to our uh, human mind. So where can uh, AI really help us? Um, AI can help us in different ways, and it already does. Uh, so, for instance, uh, it helps us with healthcare in many different ways. It helps in medical diagnosis. It helps with uh, therapies and looking for vaccination. And it helps in telemedicine because it can um, check you as a patient into the hospital and provide information about you to the specific doctor. Fantastic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? In the future, maybe AI will lead the way for us to understand ourselves even better.